Hi guys, so we are still in Edinburgh and today we're checking out this place. This is Canongate Kirk, 17th century Presbyterian church. So we've got quite a few prominent Scots buried here and there's a bit of a dark royal tale of a murder. Um, his grave is just there, on the left. But we'll, um, we'll do a full lap first and um, we'll get back to the story when we go around again. So I'm not sure there's too much around here. Um, I actually forgot about this place but when I was walking past Colton Hill. Can you see up there with the big tower? And the uh, the big building next to it is the, I think it's an old school or college. I was walking at the top there and I saw quite a few mausoleums and I remembered that must be uh, Canongate Kirk. So what I'm going to do is head down right to the bottom first see the mausoleums, um, not sure which way it is, let's try go this way first down here, so this will be the, I think the fourth video of Edinburgh um, probably going to run out of time today, so this is probably going to be the last one of the trip. I'm just hoping that there's not been none, nobody um, hiding in these mausoleums down here. It's a bit out the way off the beaten track. Let's have a look in this one. Always good when there's nobody in it. I don't think you get too many homeless here anyway because there's no roofs, is there? Just a caged roof on this one. With a bit of crap in it. Tell you what, I've got my steps in for the absolute year. Edinburgh's quite a hilly place. Look at that. Old casket. David Willison, 1798. <clears throat> So just to give you an idea of where I am on the Royal Mile, which is of course where the Queen's funeral procession passed on our way to Holyrood Palace, which is about a two minute walk from here. And the scene of the murder victim we're going to see today. Uh, let's just check in this one because I saw it on the way in. It's very burnished, doesn't it? Thomas Hay, medical doctor, 1816. And his family by the looks of it. And this place was where Mike Tyndall and Zara Phillips were married with the royal family in attendance. I'm not sure what year it was. Shall I take a guess. 
2007. And you can Google that and see if I'm right. I'm probably not. There's a big old stone in there. Don't really want to clamber up the side and have a look and leave that one. Okay, it's got to be down this way, hasn't it? It's a bit slippy. Oh, so we're going through a mausoleum here to get to it. Yeah, this is it. Wow, check this out. And this is what I saw from the road at the top. So naturally, I had to come and take a look. I did do a bit of googling on the way here, so... I sound like I know what I'm talking about a bit. So these are pretty much similar to what you'd see or what we've seen already by the time you're watching this video in Colton Hill not Colton Hill, Old Colton Burial Ground, Greyfriars, etc. James Muir Wow Look at that. And this one is an absolute monster. Look at the size of that. I mean, the name on it's long gone. Can't really make anything out. Can just read Edinburgh on it. Doesn't tell us much, does it? And these are either going to be restored in the future or probably forgotten about and just left for now it should be restored really shouldn't they McLeod 1833 Alexander Smith yeah I wonder what the plans are with those ones Mackenzie. I believe he's related to George Mackenzie, the poltergeist that grey fries. That pink granite's always hard to read names on. So I wonder what's going on in the middle here. I don't know if I'm walking on people or it's a mass burial ground or what. Fairly newish one there. Michael Taylor It's quite a big open space isn't it? There got to be people buried in the middle as well Where's the robin look? Check it out. I'm guessing this explains why there's a big open space. I can't even read that. The soldiers who died in Edinburgh Castle interred here with military honours, 1692 to 1880. And this chap died in South Africa. James Murray, 1996. Right, so it is a mass grave. Apologies for walking with everybody there, but I had no choice. Oh god, look at this. 
How close your uh, window is to a mausoleum? Wow. I wonder how the uh, realtor advertised that. One bedroomed city centre apartment with ensuite mausoleum. Sold, I'd buy it. I wouldn't mind one of these flats, look, you've got quite a good view. The cemetery be awesome. James Blair. Who is also next to somebody's balcony. Look at that. I find it cool, I don't know if people would like it. Drop me a comment, would you be a fan of having a graveyard as a view or maybe you've got one already? Let's get stuck in with a bit more tombstone reading. Got this macabre one. This stone is for the Society of Coach Drivers in Canongate, erected by Thomas Jameson. Interesting skull. Memento Mori. Remember, you will die. William McCree, Justice for the Peace for the City of Edinburgh. So a lawman. William Dallas McCree, who died suddenly at Kildare. Robert Boog. <laughs> Lovely design, isn't it? The curtains there, symbolising the final curtain. The end. It's a big one. Robert Scott, druggist in Edinburgh. To the memory of his father, Reverend Thomas Scott, who died in 1792. Little cheeky cherub on this one. It's in really good condition. Getting creepy vibes from that corner. Don't like it. Don't know who this one's for. Don't really want to go in that one for some reason. Not feeling it. The stone's missing on the back of this one. Oh, look at the skull up there. now I don't know which way to go but we'll probably go around again we always miss something first time round <coughs> excuse me these are like they could be stonemason symbols don't they in a crown smith
Not sure what other um, screaming noises. Don't know what's going on. Uh, this is Adam Smith, one of the most famous residents here. Still well loved, as you can see. He was a author on economics. Don't know too much about him, but maybe you do. So I'm going to go around again to show you a few more um, royal related graves and bits and bobs. So the first one being just here on this plaque. A plaque for something that's not here anymore. And that is a tree planted by Her Royal Highness Princess Margaret in 1947. Which, like I said, has now gone. <laughs> it's a shame, isn't it? And there's a couple more plaques around here. Um, that one there. Which is... Nobody too famous. And this one here this tree planted by Princess Alice, Duchess of Gloucester, who was the Colonel in Chief. Okay, voice over time, because I may have messed it up a little bit on the day. This is the grave of David Rizzio, who was born in Italy in 1533 and murdered in Edinburgh at Holyrood House in 1566. David was a musician and courtier for Mary Queen of Scots, so basically an entertainer. He was also a gentleman of the Privy Chamber and later became her secretary. They developed a very close relationship to the suspicion of her then husband, Lord Darnley, who one evening had him dragged from his room, stabbed and pushed down the stairs. He was then interred in the royal vault at the Abbey of Holyrood House before being moved to the location here at Canagate Kirk. And that is what happens when you become a little bit too entertaining for the Queen. Ooh la la. And Lord Darnley suffered a similar fate to Mary Queen of Scots' next husband. Interred here the corpse of Alex Ramsay. Sclater. I wonder what a Sclater is. Wow, this is just stunning, isn't it? Just as an art piece on its own. Thomas Wilkie. 1645. Wow. Some of the dates are just unreal, aren't they? That Walter Scott. John Irving, second son of George Irving of Newton. Boyhood chosen friend of Walter Scott. Wow. Okay, I'm going to check out the middle section which I avoided last time. The sun starts to go down for the day. James Petty, Captain Petty. John Douglas. Born April 1777, this his grave purchased by John Carr, 1791. So probably his friend. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? It's a bit hard to read. James Hunter, maybe. John 
Owen Conway Clothier in Edinburgh, 1843, and his only son died nine months. Oh man. Probably had a wee shop on the um, Royal Mile, didn't he? John Fraser, late merchant in Edinburgh, 1827. This one's awesome. This is why I came round again, I just walked past it. Agnes Mwat. Wow. Speechless. R. L. Stevenson planned to renovate Robert Ferguson's tombstone with the following inscription, but died before he could do so. This stone was originally erected by Robert Burns, who repaired all the charges of Robert Louis Stevenson. Robert Ferguson, poet, died 1772, I think that is. That's a sweet little cherub for John Mitchell. It's probably a dove, isn't it? James Gilbert, late brewer, north back of Canongate, 1777, aged 48. George Ray, surgeon major. Bengal Army, 1884, and Laura. George Chalmers, plumber in Edinburgh, who bequeathed his property to the Dean and Faculty of Advocates to found a new infirmary or sick and hair hospital. What a guy. Janet Cox, wife of the Reverend Dr. Belfrace. Okay, I think I'm going to wrap it up now, guys. Um, I'll just show you this what I noticed on the when I was walking around. Some kind of uh strong box, isn't it, or lock box? Maybe for donations, I don't know. Deal or no deal. <laughs> Alright guys, thanks for watching and see you on the next one.